You know, much like the nation of Israel, the church of today seems to have lost its way. The paths of righteousness no longer seem exciting anymore. You know, oh, that's 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 old. That's old stuff. You know, that's just that. You know, those old songs—they're boring. But I'll tell you, I've been in—I've been in churches where there was still, and we still have some, where they still sang the old hymns of God. They might not have had a whole lot of people, and they might not have had a whole lot of money amongst them. But you know, they knew God, and they sang the songs of God out of the old hymn books. And the power of God was there. And you know what? The special guest was there. Jesus Christ himself. That's what's important. That I've been in big Ephesus, big buildings. Where they had multitudes of people. Where it was so dead. They had a lot of loud, fast moving music. But it was dead and you're waiting for the coffin to come in. Because it's dead. Because God's not there. Because we've removed God from the church and the sanctuary. You know, God wants to be the welcome guest. I'd rather be with a handful of people that couldn't sing a tune in a bucket with a multitude of people that had the, some singing degree that knew how to sing like a mockingbird. I'd rather be with a handful of people that couldn't carry a tune in a bucket and, and be where God is than be with a multitude of people where God wasn't. We've got nothing more than a lot of times a congregation of unregenerate people that come for entertainment more than they've come for God. They've come to, to hear, to see, to hobnob, to, to show off their, their new lapels or their new dress or their new what have you. Matter of fact, they don't even come in dresses hardly anymore. I've heard ministers say, and I've seen people come in their stuff ready to go to the beach right after they get off. I mean, my God, that's a reproach unto God. No shame because we don't preach it from the pulpit. We don't preach what sin is anymore. I'll tell you, we need to get back to the old paths of preaching righteousness and holiness unto God. Lest we perish along with the rest of them. You know, much like the nation of Israel, the church today seems to have lost its way. The paths of righteousness no longer the same exciting. The church for years have been doing away with the old and bringing in the new. Well, we're getting rid of the old and bring it in the new because we don't want to be left behind. We want to be like the church down the street. We got to uh, mortgage ourselves to the hilt to get ourselves a new big building. We can't pay for it. Let's get a big old building here now so we can fill it up. And let's, you know, and, and then they find out that they're not filling it. We got this big old mortgage. So now we have to do all these things. We're going to have, we're going to have youth, you know, uh, youth services. And instead of teaching the youth about God, in the old time ways from the Bible, they have to have strobe lights and black lights, and they got to have all this hard rock contemporary music. You can't tell the difference between that that's on the hard rock radio station or on the hard rock Christian station. Uh, we, we think we got to have all these tools to bring people in, and all we have is nothing but a group of unregenerate people that don't know God who call themselves Christians. Friend, it takes that old time religion to make it right with God. We have to go down the old path. God didn't give us no new book here in this new generation. He gave us his old gospels to follow. That's what we need to follow. It's not those new modern paths where you find God. Jeremiah said return to the old paths. That's where he is. That's where the good way is. And then he said when you find it, walk in it. He said, walk therein. And he said, ye shall find rest for your soul. But, just like the church today, they don't want to be told. We will not. We rebel against God. Now let me tell you something. When you rebel against God, God has nothing but one choice. He has to chasten his people. Stubbornness and rebellion brings the swift hand of God of, of correction upon those who have made their choice to rebel and to go down their own path of rebellion. You know, that choice of rebellion brings nothing but the swift hand of correction of God upon His people and upon the church. How can the church have any effect on the outside if the church is all messed up on the inside? God's Word says, lest the blind lead the blind and they all fall into the ditch. Friend, we have what we have in our country today in Washington and in our state houses, in our Congress, in our in our public uh, 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 in our towns and in our states, we we have all this corruption. That because the church is corrupt, friend. When the 
church is on fire, it flows outward. And it begins to transform and change and reflect all the way up to the top. But when we have perversion in the church, perversion goes everywhere and it controls the people. And God uses situations and people uh, to bring his people back in line with him. Because he chases them. Because God loves the church. God loves the sinner. God loves the backslider who has gotten away from the true Bible doctrine. We've gotten away from the true Bible doctrine. You can go find uh, 100, 200 different translations of God's Word. Somebody says, well, it makes it easier for me to read. Friend, I don't have no problem reading the old King James Bible. You know, maybe when I first got saved, I had a problem. But God said, he that lacketh wisdom, he said, God gives wisdom liberally. He said, just ask. You know, and all I had to do was ask. You know, I asked and I prayed. I said, God, give me wisdom of this Word. We did, when I when I got come into into uh, Christianity back when I was raised I was raised in it, but you know I wasn't raised saved as some people think they're saved just because they go to church there they think that somehow supernaturally uh, just because you're raised going to church that you're automatically saved friend I had to have a personal relationship with myself I had to make with God myself I had to make the choice myself that He was going to be my Savior, and you know I. When I began to read God's word, you know, it didn't make a whole lot of sense in some of it at some parts. But then I began to pray. I said, God, give me wisdom. Give me understanding of this word. Because I, the Bible says, what you ever pray, whatever you pray, believe that you receive it, you shall receive it. I desire that wisdom. He said, I'll give you wisdom. I give it liberally. And then began, God began to, as, as I began to grow in him, he began to open up his word to me. And open up and tell me the hidden truths of what he was saying. You see, the Word of God is only spiritually discerned. You cannot understand what's in there unless you're of spiritual nature, if you're born again of the Spirit of God. You won't be able to begin to understand it. But when you become born again of the Spirit of God, God, He's the one that gives you all understanding. He said, I'll teach you all the truths. He said, I've sent my Holy Ghost to come and says, I will teach you all that you need to know what's in here. You know, Revelation 3.19 states, As as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. It says, Be zealous therefore and repent. You know, God says, Because I love you, I chasten you. He said, I cause, he said, I cause kings to go up, cause kings to come down. He said, I, I cause people to come into place to cause you to get your attention to let you know I'm not happy with the way you worship and the way you, you serve me. You know, uh, and I think that's what we have today. We have a lot of things happen. People think, oh, our economy's so bad and everything's so bad. Friend, if God was in control and if God was in our churches and that, friend, we'd have more of, of abundance of what we need of. There was a time in Israel's history when Israel, uh, they, they, they did money to build the temple and that. So they started taking offering and tithe and they had a chest with a hole in it. And the people brought the money in. And, the, and as they brought the money in, you know, God blessed the people. And as they came in and worshipped him, you know, and then they said, well, this chest ain't a hole, it ain't big enough. And then so they had to build a bigger place to store the finances, to build the temple and to, and to finance finance the, uh, the operation of the, of the temple. And, and so they finally, they filled up that because the people were getting blessed and bringing in the money and kept bringing in the money till finally they had to say, stop, 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 don't bring in anymore. When was the last time you heard your pastor say, don't bring in anymore? 